Welcome listeners to the very first episode of a podcast series of Bahrain chapter of ICAI. The series has started to explore growth opportunities in Bahrain by all the professionals and to establish a solid relations in training and development of nation's youth. Today we have our distinguished guest His Excellency Vinod K. Chikab, the Ambassador of India to Bahrain. and to host him we have our own chairperson ca vivek gupta thank you and enjoy the book welcome listeners to the first podcast of bahrain chapter of icai today we have the distinct honor of hosting ambassador of india to bahrain his excellency mr vinod k jacob Thank you our excellency for joining us. Thank you thank you Vivek very happy to be on your platform. Listeners in today's podcast we are going to touch three topics which includes India and Bahrain trade relations business opportunities in the region and the vision for the upcoming 3 to 5 years. Let's dive right into it. The role of embassy is crucial in fostering relations between the two nations. So, your excellency, could you please share with our listeners how embassy of India in Bahrain plays an important role in evolving trade and business relations between the two nations? You see traditionally an embassy has uh, three main responsibilities when it comes to trade and business. uh first is to develop the economic engagement so that includes uh, the the software of the engagement so that will include uh, the cooperation between the government ministries the second is the embassy protects the indian interests and the interests of indian nationals individually and uh, the third is we negotiate with the government so uh, we negotiate with the government of uh, bahrain we assist indian side government of india like ministry of finance or ministry of uh, commerce in india to have negotiations with the government of uh, bahrain uh, but in the in the, the in the modern day world there are additional responsibilities and those additional responsibilities touch upon international issues touch upon uh, international standards and global standards and the like specifically speaking about my embassy these responsibilities are handled by the commercial wing and the consular wing and also uh, dealing with the passport and visas and attestation services now uh, the the indian community which is very big here 340000 plays an integral part in this trade and economic relationship they have been actively contributing to the economic prosperity of bahrain and also strengthening the investment as well as the trade cooperation between india and bahrain and so in this there is a lot of uh, complementarities and convergences your excellency we spoke about the additional responsibilities so lately we have been aware that few mous have been signed between india and bahrain would you like to share some insights regarding these mous yeah i would like to look at in the last uh, one year or so uh, in um, in uh, november last year there was an agreement that was signed uh, between the government of bahrain and the government of india in terms uh, for uh, for dealing with the uh, economic operators economic operators this will facilitate the trade smooth trade uh, uh, interaction between the two countries so and it will also uh, bring about a be- a smooth facilitation of uh, investments so this is between the finance ministry of uh, india as well as uh, uh, the customs ministry in uh, in uh, the kingdom of bahrain the second mou which uh, you are very well aware of uh, because you were there during the visit of the honorable comptroller and auditor general of uh, india uh, honorable shri girish chandra murmu he had visited uh, bahrain in the end of last month uh, during which uh, the supreme audit institutions on both sides uh, signed an mou for cooperation in training for cooperation exchange of practices best practices in the auditing field and also cooperation on the uh, regional and international level 
So, these are uh, the two recent MOUs that have been signed. They uh, uh, exist on a huge body of foundation of uh, other MOUs which were signed during earlier times during important visits. Education and innovation are important for the growth in the future. How is Embassy fostering collaborations in education and research between India and Bahrain? Because we spoke about training, so education and innovation becomes crucial part of it. So, you see, uh, the, the government of India has a flagship project called Study in India. So, that is aimed at promoting India as an education hub, higher education hub for international students as well as NRI families and their uh, children. Uh, government of India also has the ITEC program by which a lot of Bahraini uh, uh, officials and uh, professionals can get training back in India. We are also, uh, we are also having uh, what is called an Indian alumni the meeting which takes place and the last one took place in, uh, uh, in um, November last year. The embassy hosted that and all the uh, uh, Bahraini uh, elites who have studied in India in the earlier period and also ITEC alumni participated in that event. Uh, we are open to facilitating uh, cooperation between Indian universities and Bahraini universities uh, depending on the uh, requirements of both sides. Uh, as you know, India provides amazing opportunities for higher education. India is a, 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 a fantastic place in terms of innovation. So, I will uh, welcome uh, my Bahraini friends to take this opportunity provided by India and Indian education institutions. And uh, Your Excellency, I would like to touch one subject as well from our point of view, Bahrain chapter of ICI as well. Mm -hmm. Lately, we are working on performing workshops for the Bahraini counterparts so that we can do the skill building in the region itself because we have the skills and resources, our members are equipped with it. So, in terms of training as well when we spoke about the IMOUs. Yeah. So, these are the things which we are also working in collaboration with some universities and providing our assistance to them. Uh, I must congratulate you and your uh, institution, uh, the Bahrain chapter of the um, uh, Institute of uh, Chartered Accountants of India has done phenomenal work. I am aware of the fact that on a uh, annual basis you get a lot of uh, success in terms of uh, outstanding performance and I hope you will continue to do that. Uh, I am very happy that uh, you are contributing actively to the economic prosperity of Bahrain by uh, in, in not only in the work that each and every one of you does, but also uh, through workshops and seminars that you mentioned. Um, uh, it gives, it makes me uh, particularly happy to note that a professional body like yours is contributing to strengthening India Bahrain bilateral relations. Thank you. And we spoke about economic relations. Mm -hmm. So, what are the significant developments specific which you would like to share with our listeners that we can know more about and read more about significant developments that have happened in one year which we are expecting to grow even further in the upcoming few years. Yeah, you see economic trends uh, uh, need to be captured over a slightly longer period of time but if you are asking specifically for one year I would give only one major statistic which is quite significant which is that in the period first quarter 2023 to first quarter 2024, uh, um, Indian investment into Bahrain has increased by 15 percent. It is quite substantial, 200 million dollar Indian investment into Bahrain has taken place. But let if we expand that scope and look over a five year period and uh, the reason why I take that five year period is because uh, it is now five years, exactly five years since Prime Minister Modi undertook the first state visit to Bahrain, the first ever visit by an Indian Prime Minister and important agreements were signed in that, important decisions were taken. So, there is a direct correlation between Prime Minister Modi's visit and the jump in the investments. Between 2019 and 2024, there has been a 40 percent increase in two-way investment between India and Bahrain. India has become the sixth largest investor in Bahrain. And uh, Bahrain investment has also increased. Indian investment is mainly in the financial services uh, side, but also in other areas like real estate, uh, education, uh, hospitality, um, uh, health. So, uh, this, this shows the robustness and the contribution of uh, Indian private sector as well as the commitment of the government of India to the economic relationship. But when you look at trade, 
what gives me a lot of satisfaction is uh, the fact that there is virtually no trade gap. You see, it's, it's, it's one thing to have large amount of trade happening, but it's equally important to have a uh, minimal trade gap. If you look at the data, last year 2023-24, according to Government of India statistics, uh, the bilateral trade was US dollar 1.73 billion and the trade gap was only 80 million. Now that is almost a halving of what the trade gap was in 2021-22. It was almost 150 million US dollars. Now it's become 80 million US dollars. And that is a very, very important indicator of the strength of the economic relationship between the two sides. The third aspect that I will add is that the, 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 the contribution of the Indian, uh, uh, Indian community to the economic prosperity of Bahrain, and I hope this, this study gets done, uh, it's quite phenomenal. In my own personal assessment, it's, it's quite phenomenal. Um, the, the, the way in which they're able to project brand India in the way they operate and in the way they are able to uh, uh, bring about uh, uh, active contribution, progress in Bahrain is something quite significant. And that is uh, uh, something which makes the government of India extremely uh, pleased with the, the, the collaboration. Let me give you two, just uh, two recent examples in that regard where brand India has been, uh, uh, has been projected. One is the, the, the understanding or MOU reach between uh, the Taj group for establishment of uh, hotels here through a resort and a, a normal hotel um, uh, and the kingdom projects uh, uh, which have, uh, which have uh, be, been reached recent, uh, recently. And also I am given to understand that the Apollo group of hospitals, which already has a presence here, they are collaborating with Bahrain Specialist uh, Hospital. They are going to increase that collaboration, especially in the field of oncology. Uh, so this, this, this clearly shows that the brand India value is getting a lot of traction, not only here, but also in this wider region. And that, that gives me a lot of satisfaction. And I must congratulate the Indian community and especially the Taj group as well as the Apollo group for their excellent work in that regard. Thank you. Your Excellency, that gives immense satisfaction to us as well. And yes. I actually, I want to discuss more about trade relation, but I, due to positive of time, I'll have to move to the other sections. Sure, sure, of course. So when we are talking about trade relations, now let's be more specific about the business opportunities. Mm -hmm. Bahrain offers numerous business opportunities for the businesses as well as professionals. So from your perspective, what are the key sectors where Indian business professionals, particularly chartered accountants, if I may say, might find promising opportunities for investment as well as for collaboration? See, I don't want to cherry pick for different categories because for me, the whole Indian community is a very important contributor of the bilateral relationship. I would only uh, uh, highlight which are the areas in which Indian investment has happened and has the potential. So financial services is obviously the number one. Uh, the other areas are real estate, uh, health, education, informa information technology. Um, these are the areas. Now uh, it is up to and I will call upon the chartered accountant the community to look for opportunities in this regard and also advise various businesses for that. Um, the, in, the, in this aspect, I would like to highlight one thing. Um, there is an India growth story happening. And that India growth story is what I say a 5% opportunity today, which is that while the world is growing on an average of 3%, India is growing on an average of 8%. It may grow even faster than that. So that gives a 5% opportunity. And I, that 5% opportunity is available for countries around the world. And I think as chartered accountants, you are one of the groups which are best placed to make use of this uh, growth story and to the uh, mutual benefit of both Indian economy as well as the Bahraini economy. That's what I would request all of you to do. Thank you. True, true, sir. I think we'll follow your words. And definitely, uh, you mentioned about IT as well. IT is one of the yeah. key area where our community, not just being chartered accountants, but entire professional forum is looking into and expanding into that region. So that is one subject we'll be working on as well. So we'll be sharing more details on that aspect with you in later stages. So now looking ahead, any trade missions or business forums that are upcoming in the few months, would you like to share us some details that 
are we planning any trade forums or is there any upcoming opportunity where we can see something? See, for me, the focus is on two major areas. One is market expansion. What is the opportunity for market expansion for Indian entities? Mm -hmm. Second is what are the opportunities for Indian states and union territories? Mm -hmm. So, uh, because, you know, India is so diverse, India is so big, it gives a lot of opportunity, uh, both for Indians here as well as for the Bahraini uh, friends. Um, so, we are focusing on these two important areas. Now, we are trying to keenly promote two-way investments. Now, we, we are planning to have some series of events in that regard. Uh, at the same time, we are also focusing on products. Recently, we had a delegation from APIDA. So, this is the first visit by APIDA delegation, which focused on food products, which focus on processed food, which focus on the traditional uh, um, uh, e eatable items, etc. Because this is so critical to India's uh, uh, contribution to the Bahraini economy. As you know, uh, Indian rice, Indian onions, Indian fruits, Indian vegetables are much appreciated here. So, uh, keeping those supply, li supply uh, links uh, continuing, uh, despite a uh, um, challenging geopolitical geoeconomic situation is so critical. Um, uh, so, I must uh, uh, say that uh, I have got a lot of support from the Bahraini government in this regard and we will continue along, along this line. Now, specifically on uh, states and union territories, as you know, you must be familiar by now, we have started, we have just completed phase one of the focus state or un union territory initiative, where we spend one and a half to two months promoting a state or union territory uh, uh, in two aspects. One is the one district, one product initiative of the government of India, the other is tourism promotion. So, uh, we have done uh, five, uh, five states, the next state is going to be Punjab, that we are going to start next week. That's great. And uh, I am aware about the tourism project of India as well, I am trying to be an ambassador for the tourism project. So, uh, now, there is just one, uh, it is off the topic, but uh, regarding cultural connections, because you mentioned about India's, Indian community's cultural contribution in Bahrain. So, are there any cultural programs? or anything in pipeline that we can look up to? You see, the, uh, the strength of the people to people ties uh, uh, is m most clearly seen in the cultural sphere. Because if governments have to promote any specific cooperation element, it means the, there is something fundamentally weak about that engagement. In this case, it is the people to people ties which leads the government. So, I am very happy that I have a very vibrant Indian community here. I am very happy that there is a lot of appreciation within the Bahraini society about India and Indian culture. So, um, that gives a strong basis. So, what government does, both governments do in this sphere of uh, cultural exchanges is that we play a complementary role. So, recently we had the president of Baka. Uh, His Excellency who visited India for the first ever multilateral conference of the UNESCO after Prime Minister Modi became Prime Minister for the third time. We were very honoured by his uh, visit. He had a meeting with the Culture Minister. We are also uh, participating in various events organised by the government of Bahrain. Uh, and you would also be happy to note that uh, we have started at the embassy yoga classes as well as the as well as the Hindi classes. And finally, you know, the, through this focus state uh, union territory initiative, we have started uh, promoting the uh, dances and the music and the cultures of various states. So, because you see, uh, uh, India is so big and there is a lot of appreciation for Indian culture and there is a lot of appreciation for Bahraini culture back in India. So, we need to follow, in my view, on the cultural side, we need to follow the lead of the communities. Now, since you have had unique perspective as the ambassador of India to Bahrain, we would like to know, and I believe our audience would like to know from your personal experience, what has been the key development or key change which you have observed during your tenure here in Bahrain, mm -hmm. in the economic relations, but from your personal experience, I am saying. So, let me draw your attention to the ex exceptionally good cooperation I had with His Excellency, the Commerce Minister of Bahrain, when due to domestic reasons, Government of India imposed a 
short term uh, ban on onion exports from India that was entirely because of domestic reasons back in India and it was not directed at any specific country. But I was able to work with the help of the uh, His Excellency the Commerce Minister of Bahrain and my colleagues from the Bahraini Commerce Ministry to, uh, to get a specific exemption for Bahrain. You would be happy to uh, uh, note that this exemption was given only to five countries around the world. We of course export our onions to different countries all parts of the world but only five countries got this exemption and of those five three were India's land the three were countries which had land borders with India. So the other two countries were UAE and Bahrain. So you can see the, the, the depth of this cooperation that we have it shows how much we value Bahrain and how much we are committed to the food security of Bahrain. And this uh, uh, episode showed the depth of the relationship. Another incident which showed the depth of the relationship was the fact that His Majesty King Hamad um, gave royal pardon to nearly 100 Indian nationals. Now usually, the, uh, usually we used to get pardons for around 20 to 25 at a time but this was 100. So I must thank, I want to use this platform once again to thank uh, His uh, Majesty King Hamad for his uh, mercy and the kindness he has shown to the uh, Indian nationals. And I must say that, uh, you know, we have been uh, seeing a gradual, gradual phase of growth of the relationship. So earlier it used to be only people to people and trade relationship. Now it's much wider. I told you about the investment cooperation. Now Indian Navy is also participating in providing maritime security to this region. Uh, the, uh, the collaboration is increasing in the area of climate change. We are cooperating on sustainable development in the, con in the context of the Global South. Uh, we were very honored by the participation of His Excellency the Foreign Minister of Bahrain in the third iteration of the Voice of Global South Summit which took place on 17th August. And he shared his views on the challenges facing the Global South and I must say it was uh, really uh, enlightening to hear and I look forward to his guidance for taking this relationship forward. Your Excellency. Uh Pardon me, I was so involved in your discussions, I forgot that we I have to ask a few more questions for you. Yeah, please, please, please. <laughs> yes. And, uh, but I must say, the leaders of the country, we are also indebted and thankful to the leaders of the country for making Bahrain such a livable and business friendly place. Yeah. So we remain thankful for that. And uh, you spoke about gradual growth in the relations. So I'll just touch upon that in the form of upcoming vision for the few years. So I just have uh, two questions. Any upcoming initiatives that you would like to share with our listeners, which shows the vision which we have for India and Bahrain relation and specifically foreign investments in India also? Yeah. You see, uh, the vision for the relationship is laid down by the leadership on both sides. On the Indian side, uh, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his uh, uh, discussions with uh, His Majesty King Hamad mm -hmm. and his discussions with His Royal Highness uh, Crown Prince and Prime Minister uh, Prince Salman and they uh, have reached a high degree of convergence on many issues and they are these three people are leading this guiding this relationship. So in a mm -hmm. sense my job has become that much easier because there is absolute clarity in what they do. Uh, if I were to characterize the relationship, I'll say the relationship is very healthy, it's very robust, it's, it is becoming more and more comprehensive. I mentioned that the earlier traditionally it used to be a trade and people to people, now it's expanded to investment, maritime security, cooperation in regional issues, international issues and I see the degree of convergence increasing day by day. So that is the basis of the relationship and we have uh, uh, a very forward looking uh, uh, leadership in Bahrain which is very uh, tolerant and liberal towards the Indian expatriate community and I am deeply grateful for that and that forms the basis of this engagement. Now in terms of specific initiatives, you know, as you know Vivek, we just completed uh, uh, our general elections, new government in place but this new government in uh, Delhi represents continuity and usually during this period of the elections not much diplomatic activity takes place but as uh, I mentioned earlier, as we um, 
In July, the first multilateral event uh, was held in Delhi after Prime Minister Modi took charge and this was UNESCO related uh, session and we were honored by the presence of the President of Bhaka uh, who participated in that. Then we had the participation of uh, the Foreign Minister of Bahrain in, uh, uh, in the Voice of Global South Summit third iteration. Uh, we had the participation, uh, we, we had the discussions between the supreme audit institutions of India and Bahrain when uh, uh, Honorable Comptroller and Auditor General of India Sri Girish Chandra Murmu visited Bahrain last week. So, uh, I do not want to uh, list out what is going to happen, but you will see now the activity picking up yes. for two main reasons. One, the weather is starting to improve yes. uh, both in Bahrain as well as in India. And second, because uh, the, 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 the government in India has uh, gone into the acceleration mode for foreign policy engagement. So, Your Excellency, I will wrap up this podcast just with one last question. Yeah. I know uh, you already gave your answers to us and vision to us. But still, I would love to ask for our listeners any message for Chartered Accountants chapter here in Bahrain that you would like to give. As I already told, you know, I am very honored to be associated with the Bahrain uh, chapter of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. They have been do doing exceptional work both in their individual responsibilities as well as a collective. It is show, I have uh, seen it in the way they organize events, in the way they go about their activities and I um, uh, wish to congratulate you on assumption of your new responsibility and I hope your team will be as successful as your predecessor. Um, see the first piece of advice that I would give to a professional body like yours is, um, is to contribute to the development of India Bahrain relations, that is absolutely essential. The second is you have to do it, if you are in this country, you have to do it by following the laws and regulations of the Kingdom of Bahrain. They are a very friendly government, very um, uh, liberal and tolerant government. Uh, so, uh, you can't ask for a better place uh, to uh, uh, be in. Uh, in the current context. So, I would urge all of you to follow the rules, laws and regulations of the Kingdom of uh, uh, Bahrain. And also the uh, last piece of advice is that, you know, you should be uh, the conduit for exploring the op op opportunities that are available for benefiting from India's growth story, the 5% uh, yes. growth story. So, uh, the 5 percent opportunity is, is immense, it does not happen and it, you may not get it for, uh, for, for a long period of time. So, this is the time and I think the chartered accountants can contribute to that because you, you need to advise both sides. Yes. You need to advise both sides, that is the nation, nature of professional bodies and I hope you will continue in that way. Thank you so much, uh, Your Excellency. And uh, with this, we end our podcast and we thank you so much, Your Excellency, for the such valuable insights. It's uh, been a pleasure to have the discussion with you and to understand how Embassy of India and our ambassador plays an important role in strengthening the relations between the two nations on personal, professional and diplomatic fronts. So with thank that, you. we thank you again. And we end our podcast. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for more enlightening discussions by Bahrain Chapter of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Thank you, sir. Thank you.